Good morning and welcome to worship. We invite you to stand. And I remind you, for those of you young, young at heart, if you didn't grab a rhythm instrument on your way in, please feel free to run back there and grab one because it's all about making some noise this morning. And we're going to start with a song that's fairly new to us called Now the Green Blade Rises. And I really want to hear the, those shakings and those t clickings and all that tinkering out there this morning. All righty, let's get started. Is another one that's new to us but not a new song at all it's an old hymn called this is my father's world Yeah. 
Good morning, and welcome to worship. Our theme for the season is Now the Green Blade Rises, uh, but uh, a special welcome to everybody who's here, and for those of you who are joining with us, joining us online this morning, a special welcome to you as well. Uh, if you've been worshiping with us for a while, or even if this is your first time, if you want to get to know us a little bit better, you can go to our contact page, which is rocklaverne.com slash contact, uh, and there you can reach out and ask any questions you might have. Also, in, you'll probably in your pews see these connection cards um, that have uh, opportunities to you know, let us know you were here, uh, but also a question about reflecting in worship as well as prayer requests and some volunteer opportunities, so please fill those out and drop them in the offering plate. We have, of course, we got summer day camp coming up, woohoo, on June 19th to 23rd, so uh, if you, if you want to help out and you, you haven't uh, said so yet, please say so. Actually, we, we're, we're getting good volunteers. The, there's not a lot of names on that sign-up sheet. This is because people have actually been talking to each other and signing up that way. So uh, things are shaping up really well. We're excited about that. So pray for the families that will be coming. Um, also, we are serving a meal for Central City Lutheran Mission next Sunday, May 7th. Um, and there are sign-up sheets for that. We're not actually going. Again, we are sending the meals like we've been doing for a couple of years now. But uh, if you'd like to contribute, there's information and a sign-up sheet in the entryway. That's all that I have for announcements this morning. Will you please stand? And we'll share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Why don't we take a moment to share that peace with each other. Our next song this morning is O Come to the Altar. And when we come to worship, we don't always come right up to the altar. We might come to the rails for Holy Communion. But when we come into the space, we are coming to the altar. We call it a table. But in either way, we come and we join with God and we join in his presence. i 
Lord, we thank you that you invite us to come to your altar, to come and be in your presence, to come and hear you call, to hear you bring us new life, and to just hear you love us. And so we pray that this time in worship, we can come and be calm before you, be still before you, and hear your voice. We pray these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for he is for his name's sakes. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me through all the days in my, of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And our next scripture for this morning is from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and will find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Well, we're continuing our theme for the season of Easter, which is now the green blade rises. And today is something of like a minor festival or almost a hidden festival. It's called Shepherd Sunday. Well, it's also Family Sunday today, and we have pizza and games planned for afterwards out in the courtyard, but it's Shepherd Hunt Sunday. It's kind of like a little hidden f festival. Happens on the fourth Sunday of Easter every year. We always have Psalm 23, usually a passage from John 10 where he talks about sheep and shepherd and stuff. So let's kick it off with a, a little quiz game. And this is for everybody now, the quiz, quiz on how much you really know about sheep. Because I know you're all experts, right? Yes? No, you just yell out your answer. That's what I want. All right? So, first question. And now these are multiple choice questions. So let me, let me give you the choices before you yell out your answer. What shape are the pupils of sheep's eyes? Are they A, round, B, almond, like a cat, C, rectangular, or... D in the shape of a sailboat. I got one, two rectangulars. Almond shaped. D, a sailboat. <laughs> well, guess what? It's the shape of a rectangle. Their pupils are rectangular. Isn't that weird? And that means they have, they have like almost 300 and 320 degree vision. Oh, no, not the eye. The eyeballs are... Well, I think they're spherical. I, I assume they are, but I, would, I assumed their pupils were, spherical, were round. So. But they can almost see behind themselves because of this weird-shaped pupil that they have. Okay, question number two. When did humans start keeping sheep as farm animals? A, 10,000 years ago. B, 32 million years ago. C, 1,200 years ago. Or D, yesterday afternoon. D. D. B. E, 1975. 
It's A, 10,000 years ago. I mean, not 32 million, but that's a long time to have sheep as farm animals. Okay, this is only two uh, options here. As sheep relate to each other, they are A, mostly loners, keep to themselves, or B, very social. B, B they are very social animals, sheep. Now, uh, this one's true or false. True or false, mother sheep can tell the voice of their own lambs apart from all others. Yeah, you, you know it's true. It's, I don't even know why I put it in there. Okay, last question. Which country has the most sheep in the world? A, New Zealand. B, China, C, the United Kingdom, or D, New Jersey? A, New Zealand, A, C for the UK, Arizona. <laughs> it's actually China. And, and, okay, the second, the country with the second most sheep in the world, because, of course, how do you count them? Um, this country with the second most sheep in the world, what? as they jump over the fence. <laughs> Australia is number two, with 75 million sheep in the country. Yeah, China, exactly. China, 175 million. So by far the most sheep of any, and who knew? Who knew there were that many sheep in China? What? Are super aliens counting our sheep? That must be the only way it could work. All right, so in our gospel lesson for today, now at this point, um, we're not really having a children's sermon, but I'd like the children to come forward and like take this section of pew here. C come, on, come on down, come on down, because this, this is going to get a little more interactive here. And I'm going to move this for now, just for now. All right, okay, so now... Uh, go, ahead, go ahead and sit down, sit down, sit right there, yeah, instead of up here like we always do. So Jesus uses a couple of metaphors in the Bible lesson today, and a metaphor is like a, a play on words. You could call it a word picture, and these are metaphors that he uses to talk about our relationship with him, and two of them are very interesting. One is he talks about the voice of a shepherd, and the second one is a gate. It's kind of weird, right? First is the voice of the shepherd, and the second one is a gate. Now, watch this. Watch this up on the screen. Wasn't that neat? At first it just looks like he's yelling out in the middle of nowhere and it's foggy and then all they come, they come running, don't they? They just come running out to him. Yeah, he was yelling, but he was, they recognized his voice. You can actually, this was kind of a fun search that I did finding this video on, on YouTube. That's on YouTube. And there are other ones on there where, where uh, 
they actually do this little experiment where strangers call out to the sheep and the sheep ignore them. But when the actual shepherd starts to call to them, they, start, they turn their heads and they start coming in his direction. I don't know what he was saying. And that actually continues on. He, you end up talking to him and he's got this very thick, uh, maybe Scottish or Irish accent that's hard to, or maybe, no, I think he's Danish or maybe Dutch. Uh, anyway, European, Northern European. Maybe even Scandinavian. Let's stop. Let's leave it at that. So they come running. So Jesus talks about that, right? He talks about the, the shepherd or the sheep knowing the voice of the shepherd and how they don't follow the voice of someone else, but they follow their shepherd. And I love how they, and he keeps going. It looks like all the sheep, sheep are there, right? But he keeps calling out because there are still more because he always knows that Bill and Tom are always lagging behind and, you know, he knows all their sheep with their quirks and their uniqueness. And on Easter Sunday, we had something like that. Mary was outside the tomb. She didn't recognize Jesus until he spoke her name. Now, let's do a little experiment. You guys ready for it? Maybe we can just involve everybody in this. Everybody wants to. Do you, you notice on these table on the sides, it's kind of hard to see. There are tiny little sheepy sheepies on them, on there. Now, we are, we're, gonna, we're not going to pay attention to those right now because there are other little sheepy sheepies that are hidden from like anywhere around this part of the sanctuary. So what I want you to do now, I, I want you to go and find those sheep and we'll pretend that I'm the shepherd, okay? So I want you to go find the tiny sheep and when you find them, bring them up here behind the communion rail where, where I, the shepherd, am, all right? Ready? If you can just find one and bring it when you're ready. But okay, go ahead. Go on. Find the sheep. Okay, great. Go ahead. Sit down. Keep looking. There are more. Is that pretty good? Is that pretty good? All right. I got, we got a couple. We got two up here. I'll, I'll give you a clue, Cambria. None of them are in the middle. They're all out on the edge there. <laughs> yeah, look down low, look up high. Okay, I think everybody's got one. Come on up. Hi there. Whee! <laughs> all right. Yay! Meh, meh. What does the sheep say? What does the sheep say? Yeah, that's right. Good job. Go ahead. Go ahead and sit down. Sit down. Go ahead and sit. There. All right. Great. Now, the other thing that Jesus said is kind of strange is he says, is the whole thing about a, a gate. He says, I am the gate. Isn't that weird? I am the gate. Let's see. Let's, let's imagine that, okay? How would that... Oops. So... What would it be if I was a gate? Let's see, like, like. <laughs> right? <laughs> that, okay, that doesn't make sense, does it? There you go. <laughs> now, here's the thing. <laughs> oh, where am I? I'm lost. Okay. <laughs> Now everybody's turning into gates. Yeah. See, here's the thing, is shepherds would often put their sheep into a pen at night, you know, a bunch of a round fence, or into a cave. And what they would do is, as the sheep, you know how I had you come up here behind the communion rail? As the sheep would come in the entrance to the cave, the shepherd would check each one of them as they come in. Yeah, like this, and say, okay, are you healthy? Yeah, you're in good shape. No wounds, no weird bugs in your, in your fleece. And once, <laughs> and once all the sheep are in, here's the thing. This is where the gate part comes in. Once all the sheep are in, the shepherd would lie down at the entrance to the cave and sleep at the entrance of the cave. Hey, this is kind of comfortable. Would sleep at the entrance of the cave and literally be the gate the entr at the entrance of the cave. And so the sheep... So the sheep don't get out, and if any animal, bad guys or animals try and get in, the shepherd knows about it. 
Now, Jesus said, I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will come in and will go out and find pasture. Four eyes and one mouth? Wow. Well, you were talking about aliens counting the sheep. Maybe that's an alien sheep. So, look at this. Got another one. Isn't that cool? It's kind of mesmerizing, which is a word that means you just kind of look at it and go, wow. And the shepherds are leading the sheep into new pastures where there are new, there's new greenery, new grass to enjoy. And Jesus says, I am the gate. Whoever enters my, by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. And with that one little statement, Jesus talks about how he provides protection from evil and good green pastures full of good things for us to keep us nourished and strong. Jesus died on Good Friday, but he rose again on Easter, and he beat death by doing that. And so now Jesus helps us. He did that so that you and I can have new life, so that we could be a new creation. And when even we have tough times, he leads us through. We might start to think, oh, I like this pasture I'm in, but Jesus wants to lead us to new pastures with even more good green for us, good food for us. Will you pray with me? Let's all pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for being our good shepherd, for providing us protection from evil and from leading us to new pastures and still waters. And Lord, help us to remember you are our good shepherd. Amen. Okay, you can go back to where you were sitting before. You can keep that. <laughs> I forgot to mention that you might have noticed a few, a few uh, dark figures around the sheep. Those were the sheep dogs helping to, to shepherd the sheep. Now, it's nowhere in the Bible that I know of, but I often think of my role as being a sheep dog to help make sure that we're all listening and following where the shepherd leads. Trouble with that is I'm a sheep too. So, but anyway. So, uh, Lisa's going to play some soft music, and while she does that, I'd like us just to simply sit in that for a moment and reflect on what it means for us individually to call Jesus our shepherd.
we will continue with the offering. Will you pray with me, please? God, we thank you for all of the gifts that you give us. And we pray that you receive these gifts returned to you as expressions of our desire to continue to follow where you lead and to direct our lives towards you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. The night before Jesus was crucified, He celebrated the Passover meal with the disciples and he took the bread of the meal. He broke it and gave it to them, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, take this bread and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And he took the cup of wine, he said the blessing over it and he gave it to them and said, take this cup and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. And my blood is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Will you join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, we're going to continue with communion. We have both wine and grape juice. If you would prefer to have the grape juice, just just let us know as you come up for communion. Now, um, there might actually be a couple more sheep hidden, but there are sheep little sheepies on those tables there. And the reason for that is, for those of you who didn't participate in the the sheep hunt, um, sheep hunt? Sure. Um, After you come for communion, you are invited to pick up a sheep of your own on the way back to where you're sitting as a way of meditating on your own shepherd-sheep relationship with Jesus in the days ahead. So the table is prepared. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is good.
Will you please stand? And will you pray with me, please? God, our good shepherd, we thank you for this gift. We thank you for uh, the, the way we see that Jesus laid down his life for us as his sheep. And he takes it up again for our life and our abundant life. So let this meal be a reminder, a nourishment towards the abundant life that you give us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. of fun stuff on the patio, so we hope you can stick around for a little bit. So now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.